Hi, I'm going to show you the various advanced things you can do with FTM 3D materials using Fast64. The first thing I want to go over is the color combiner and color registers. First, let's talk about color registers. A color register is an input color which is applied by the color combiner by the input formula, which is A minus B times C plus D. If you look at the UI here in Fast64, and you unchecked the show simplified UI, you can see it here. A minus B times C plus C. You look at the input colors, you have to select one of these drop downs. The default is shade, but I have a bunch of different ones here. A color register is made up of just RGB values. The math for the color registers is applied per channel. So full color is one, no color is zero. This also corresponds to white versus black. There's four important color registers to know about for the color, reg uh, color combiner. These are textures, shade, environment, and primitive. The textures are pretty self-explanatory. You select the texture, and then the input color is going to match the texture. Shade is also known as lighting or vertex color. It's calculated by the game and you are given a light color you could select and a direction of light. In Fast64, the direction of light is given by this custom lighting button and selecting a physical light object. If you're in vertex color mode, then the shade color is equal to the vertex color. Primitive and environment are color registers you can simply input and then it stays that way for the entire material. So I have a selection here where I can choose my color and then it's going to be that everywhere. So with that out of the way, I have some preset materials here that I'm going to show you and these represent the basic color combiner archetypes you will use. So the first one is pass. Pass simply takes one color register and outputs that color. The formula for this is that you want to select the color register you want in D. I have prim color selected here, and prim color is green, and the output is green. Next is interference. So, for interference, you use this when you want to add depth, depth or variety to your input colors. This is a multiplication between two color registers, commonly textures or shade or another color. So you put the base color you want in A channel. I have textures zero here. And then the interference color you want in the C channel. So you can see where the texture is. I have blue and where there's no texture, there is black. That's because the color is interfering with the texture. So normally this would be white and now I have blue. Next is interpolation. Interpolation is when you want to fade between two color registers across a face or multiple triangles. So this is done by taking the same formula as interference and then applying the second color register to B and D. So I have my base color primitive and then my interference variable. This is environment color alpha. And then on B and D, I have a second color, environment color. So if we go over here to the sources, you can see blue is primitive, yellow is environment. So blue is my primary and yellow is my secondary. So now I can interpolate between these two colors by using my interpolation variable which is entire environment color alpha. So when I have one, I'm at my first color. And when I have zero, I'm at my second color. And I can fade between the two. If I go to half, I have a mixture between blue and yellow. And those are the basic color combiner materials. With that said, I want to finally talk about alpha inputs. Alpha is the same thing as color inputs with respect to commonly used modes, but the way the math works out is different. That's because there's only one color channel for alpha instead of three colors. And you can see with the inputs, I have way less, and they're different. I have texture zero alpha, primitive color alpha, 
instead of the texture zero and my C inputs are way less. To get around this, you should use intensity textures. Intensity just means grayscale, but what is special about the grayscale value is that it's also used as the alpha value. I have a preset he material here, which is a grayscale gradient I'm using. And this is the same as the interpolation I had before. And you can see that the gradient goes from my first color to my second color. But if you notice, the interpolation variable is texture zero alpha, not just texture zero. And if I go to texture zero, it's the same thing. What this means is that the alpha is a copy of the grayscale value. So where black is, I actually have full alpha. And where white is, I have no alpha. If I were to take the alpha input and then actually apply my texture zero alpha here, I get the expected result of this fading to zero. And you can see here in my face, I have color here at the top and no color at the bottom. And that's all I got for now. If you have a question about F3D materials or something else you want me to go over, let me know in the comments. I'm gonna be making some more videos about this, explaining the various aspects. I have plans to talk about textures, in-depth, geo modes, and even render modes.